So I'm digging out all my, my tools and epoxy. Unfortunately, my epoxy got a hole in it, so I'm gonna patch that hole first. And then I'm gonna test this epoxy because it's been freezing. It's been like a lot of temperatures, so I wanna make sure that still kicks okay. Uh, and then they said I'm allowed to do my own work here in this boatyard, so I'll start uh, patching up the little um, gouge in the, in the rudder. And then uh, maybe I'll try to pop the prop off again because maybe I've got, I can use, I've got a little butane torch, it's not that hot, but maybe that'll help get the prop off. And then the faster we can go, the faster we can go, get back in the water and go sailing. I took my uh, angle grinder and I ground away a little bit of the fairing and paint and fairing so then I can lay up some more. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll um, put some thick end epoxy here and then put some uh, layers of glass just to kind of smooth it over so I can shape it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, just want to cover up this uh, metal shaft and I don't know, there's not really any core in here I guess, so just, just kind of seal it up, make it a little bit smoother, should be good. I took one more stab at my little bearing puller, just didn't quite have that oomph. This time I had some, uh, some penetrating oil and also I tried my crappy little torch. I need to get a real map gas one for this kind of stuff in the future. This must be where they haul out the big boats. They've got these big like spools and they just pull them out on the ramp. Pretty cool. So I went ahead and uh, smeared some thickened epoxy over the rudder shaft that was exposed and then I I put a layer of glass on it so I could just kind of like smooth it out a little bit. I mean, it's pretty lumpy still, but it's a lot better than before. Look at the other side over here. So I think that'll, that'll be an okay repair. And then to make it perfect, I could put some fairing compound and some more layers of glass maybe. But for now, I think that'll, that'll be good. I might do a few more layers of glass later. This morning, they just moved me a few feet over here and put me on boat stands. So my repair has hardened up nicely. I was a little concerned about that epoxy, although I did a test and it seems to still kick no problem. So yeah, that, that'll be good. I think it's a little lumpy, but no worries. It's under the water. A little bit of a gouge there. I think it's probably better that I don't build it up too much so it doesn't, um, doesn't want to strike again. I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll build some little blocks inside the cockpit that keep the tiller from moving further than it should be allowed to. That way I don't have this happen again. Very expensive. A much heavier duty uh, prop puller than I had. <laughs> I just tried to use this bearing puller, no luck at all. So we got the propeller off. Was it just the, the puller and the torch uh, did no, the job? Uh, with two flanges. Two flanges, oh, okay. And let's take a look at the, the damage. So we're thinking it's gonna be a replacement's the best mm -hmm. option there. All right, thank you very much. Okay, just dropped the old jib. The new sails are on their way today. My friend Jeremy is bringing them over. Here's the guy with the sails. Wow. It's impressive they fit two sails in there. You got them nicely tight. It looks like he fit the battens in there too. He said he might not be able to do that, so that's awesome. Thank you, Sven. Let me open that up. All right, let's pull these up on the boat, I think. I think it's calm enough we could put the, the jib up there. So here we go. He gave us some t-shirts. Look at that. Got a bunch of them. And we got the, which one is this one? I made of contender CDX. Six ounce, six and seven ounce. And those are the measurements. Um, oh, mainsail. So we got the mainsail. And then we got our, our jib here. Genoa. Also contender CDX. Cruising laminate, polyester cruising laminate. There's the jib, I got it with a yellow sunshade. Oh, it's so pretty. That looks so cool. They're so high tech looking. Ah, it's a little bit windy, so I think we'll wait on that. We'll do the main sail first. The old sail is coming off. So the new sail is going to be loose footed. So it should be much easier to install and remove because instead of having the bottom go into this track, like these sail, it'll only attach at the uh, the corners. And I was a little bit hesitant, but Sven told me this is the better way to do it. 
I mean, it definitely sounds easier for installing it. And he says the shape can actually be even better too, with a loose foot maybe. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for trying different stuff. I did insist on the full battens though. He wanted to do it partially battened. And I just like the full battens because it doesn't luff, you know, when you're pointed into the wind. And there's a lot of, when you're single-handed, there's a lot of moments you just have to leave the sail uh, to do different things. I just don't like it beating around. And I think the shape is nice too with the full battens. Also where the partial battens terminate, sometimes it, the sails end up pairing. I've had that happen. So this was full batten. I wanted to stick with that. They're harder to ship though, I guess. Here's your main sail. Really nicely done. I like the color. I've got brand new everything on this. First time I've had a sailor where all this stuff wasn't broken off or, or like jerry rigged together. So I'm unwrapping my batten. I think he has a, it's just one long one and maybe I cut it to length, but this thing is a bomb every time I cut one of these things. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll take this down on the ground and we'll cut it down there. Yeah, I have a, I have a saw if you want. Okay, yeah, we can use your saw. Uh, uh, let me get down on the ground then. I'll yeah, walk it down and I'll, and I'll yeah. pass it down to you. How about that? Mm -hmm. So there is our 30 foot batten, it looks like. <laughs> but he marked it for us, so we just gotta cut it right here. So that looks easy enough. We'll try the hacksaw. <laughs> On there. Good. Probably the other caps are in the sail already. Going? Cool. Okay. Cool. Okay, by the time we got the fourth batten, I think we know what we're doing now. Okay, so the trick is pull the batten to the bottom, get a little paint stick with a notch in it. And that little string goes there. We work our way from the side. It's kind of tight. Yeah. Goes in. Nice and tight in there. No, just, yeah, that's good. Uh, per perfect one. Yeah, yeah, I cut the same spinnaker. I think I'm gonna keep that spinnaker, but I want, I kind of, I kind of want to get a uh, maybe a code zero because the spinnaker is for like the, the downwind running angles, and then the code zero for reaching would be oh, nice. Okay. So then I'd have all my light wind and heavy winds coverage. Look at the donated if someone needs a sail or something. Okay, so one little hiccup: they, they one of these sail slides was a little bigger than the rest, so they must have just swapped that. But no worries, I'll pop one off the old sail, and we'll be back in business. Roller tasker sails are made in Thailand and then they just ship them to you. All right, there's the jib. It's beautiful. Oh, radial. Love it. Amazing. Okay. How's that tension? It gets okay. Let's see how that furls. One second. I'm just gonna walk forward. Yeah. Okay. Looking good with the yellow, yellow and blue. So while Jeremy's here, we're gonna pop off this ladder, which is really meant to go, it was meant to go on the flat surface. Like I kind of hacked together this, this thing. But what I wanna do is I wanna move it over to the side here because I think it's actually better to climb up the boat on the side. It's a little safer than having this plopping down on, on top of you. And then the boat's rolling, you can, it's really easy to climb out on the side because you just climb a little bit and then it rolls you on in. So I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll put my ladder right here because I never, and I unfortunately have this track, but I never actually move these cars. So I think it can just go over the track and one day I'm gonna remove this track. The way the jib has been set up, it's it always, even when it's reefed, it always, the cars need to be in about this position. Um, the only question is do I do in front or behind? So I decided to just put the ladder right in front of the, the jib track here and 
drill some holes. Well, unfortunately, there's core in the deck here, so I'll have to take this out and over drill with a bigger drill bit and then fill it with epoxy and then re drill it. It's kind of a process. But don't want to get a nice solid deck, don't need to rot the core out. I think it will be nice having this on the side of the boat. I kind of want to have it a little further back, but we'll try it here first. The, the, the big downside though is anything sticking out of the side of your boat when you're, when you're like sailing and docking is liable to get ripped right off when you side swipe a pylon or something. <clears throat> but I'm getting a little better at docking, so maybe maybe that won't happen. I really need to do some type of like rub rub strip that will protect that and then the uh, the chain plates also we'll to see how this does with tangling on the jib sheet too i'm not sure about having this it seems like ropes could catch on here very easily so this will be an experiment if it doesn't work and always fill the holes and move it somewhere else I just need to get this 80 pound scooter off the boat. So I'm using the winch and lowering it down real slowly. Okay, got the scooter down. Does it work? Yep, tires seem good. Hopefully they don't get flat. Now, definitely wearing a helmet to drive in Malta. They're horrible drivers here. I'm gonna get my passport, not my passport, my ID card, because I'm Maltese now. Very faster time to be in Malta. So Varla got us back alive, just barely. I think it's fast. Still waiting to find, uh, try to, they, they found a propeller that fit, but the taper was wrong. Um, so they're seeing if we can, we can get one ordered that will fit this taper. And that's that. Look how much salt gets on your shoulder panels. It's crazy. <laughs> They found a new rudder for me, but the taper is a little bit off. So they said the shaft needs to come out so we can machine them to fit together, um, right? So it's come off last year and come off or come off two years ago. It come off again. It's just gonna be hard, but it's gotta be easier than last year. At least we, I think I know the trick this time. So I quickly gave up on trying to remove the shaft myself. I'll let these guys do it. They. I'm just getting in the way they know what they're doing and have the better tools okay the prop shaft is out thanks to our boatyard helper unfortunately no one was on the inside to grab the pss when he pulled it out so that has fallen into the bilge which is really inaccessible <clears throat> fortunately it's actually i can see it it's not actually underwater i pumped it out you can see it just back there behind that tube, that round that round thing right there. So hope they can get it without dropping it in there. That will be the plan. I saved it. Stuck the boat hook down there. <laughs> it was, it's like the most inaccessible, inaccessible part of the boat. It was just, just teetering on the edge of falling into the deep builds too, which is like, that's like another two feet down there. So it goes down there so deep. I think I should probably close off that build somehow at some point because there's I mean there's no reason to have it built that deep and it's just like stuff's liable to get lost down there. Today I went to the marine shop and I picked up a uh, outboard mount just I want to mount it on the back of the boat just so I or keep it with me because I had the option of just picking up an outboard uh, if something like this happens in the future to the motor or the prop I think that's good good backup plan I felt kind of um Hopeless, helpless, uh, without having the propeller. So this, I think this is a good thing to have. I've been talking to E-Propulsion about potentially getting a, what's it called, their Evo 1. I think it's like a three horsepower electric deal, but it has regen too, which would be cool. Hydro regen, so at least just to charge the battery um, on, in the motor. So then you could be sailing with it, the propeller in the water, charge up your, your uh, little outboard. And then if all you need to do is motor into a slip or something, you could just use that, you could use the electric, the electric motor, so that might, that'd be kind of cool. Also got my Maltese courtesy flag and some spinnaker repair tape, getting a few holes in that spinnaker. Let's just tape it up and be good. And then 
I need to make a new, uh, I lost the pin holding my anchor and I couldn't find one long enough so I thought maybe I'd just cut this and then I'd use that to secure the anchor up front. I wasn't sure if this was the correct one or if uh, you're supposed to use that one for the courtesy flag. I think I've seen both of them. Well, most of the boats, a lot of the boats have this as the flag on the back. Um, but then I just noticed three boat yard, boats in the boatyard have the other one uh, for the courtesy flag. So, well, we'll just go with this. I think, I think it's a good flag. I'm trying to unscrew this winch and this thing is completely stuck. So I'm using, I got a rope around here and I'm using this winch to undo this winch. But even with that, I think I still have to hammer it. But it's starting to finally budge. I got this thing as like piano tight, wire tight. There we go. So there we got it off finally. You can see the problem is this little lip, like right below the threads, is kind of corroding, corroding away and causing all sorts of problems. I just mixed up a batch of thickened epoxy and I made some nick and some changes on the boat. You know, I drill a lot of holes, but occasionally I do fill them, so I'm moving the pad eye for the, uh, what is this, the whisker pole, spinnaker pole, from the middle to this to over here. So I made some thickened epoxy holes so I can re-drill that and I fill the old ones. I want to do that because this is like, that's kind of in the way if you're setting up the dinghy or something. So I move this over here, then you have a, oh, well, one, a place to sit, you know, and chill out, but then also just a little bit of an open platform on the boat to do stuff. While I was at it, I also over drilled my holes for the swim ladder, filled in a little whoopsie hole over here where I accidentally drilled to the side of the boat. I filled in the hole for the uh, experimental uh, test of the wind sensor. I filled in these old cockpit, cockpit holes, cockpit locker latchet holes. A little bit more there, some over there. And I filled in the hole, uh, like that old snap, filled that in. And then I filled in the, uh, the holes for the old swim, where the swim ladder used to be. So right now, once that dries, the boat will be watertight. And I just hit it with a little angle, angle grinder and make it flush. And the next time I have some paint out, I'll paint over it. And it's like it never ever happened. So why not drill holes in your boat, you know? If you can make it just how you want it and you can fix them when the, the, uh, you decide you want it to be watertight again. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more on top of these holes. So then if it sags, it drips. There's more, it's not all just falling off. Put it up there. Pickle's getting her yearly uh, paint touch up. Paint holds up okay, but every once in a while I just put a little more on the parts that flake off. I found this uh, anti fouling in a spray paint form, so we'll just touch up our little repair here. Let's see how this works. Cover is pretty good. good like it never even happened so the day i'm on a mission to fill my scuba tank and my co2 tank this one needs a hydrostatic test so see if i can fit them both in my backpack i put a little foam in there to pad the back and then we'll take the scooter it's about a 20 minute drive so maybe 35 minute scooter ride this is the place we want to be all right the wind has been really light Nice. So I decided to raise the mainsail, even though we're on the boat stands, and it looks awesome. The only problem is we're just, I got it as high as it will go. I even climbed the mast to double check and I had it made about six inches too long. Uh, so I'm sure that can be fixed, but it's kind of a nuisance. I guess until then I'll just use the first reef. Um, and we'll have a smaller sail. The back, actually, it's interesting though, because I got the back measurement is fine. It's just that uh, that front point, it's like the wrong shape. For this boat. And at this height also, it needs to be a little shorter because it hits the, uh, Hits the back stay here. Yeah, 
it won't, it won't clear the back stay. But there it is with the first reef. It doesn't look too bad. A little smaller than the other one, but I think the way the the roach is, it would hit the backstay if it was much higher. day in Malta <laughs> but before it's even dark after I replaced my starter in Barcelona I read um, on some forums there's just dozens like uh, yeah dozens of people having a, a similar problem and the problem actually isn't with a starter it's with the wire that goes from the button to the solenoid uh, it's just too thin of a gauge of wire I guess and uh, so, so the solution is uh, to either add an extra wire to have, more, to have the current voltage drop go th better through the wire I don't know how I say that um, or or you can add a, a relay in the system um, so I'm gonna try the wire trick just I got some some wire from a from the old dab lights so I'll just double up the wire from the button starting button to the solenoid and hopefully that'll fix my starting problem if not I'll just pick up one of those relays and and wire that in there that should that should do the trick hopefully so I don't think we'll need to take it all apart this time the wire we're looking for is this one right uh I guess I don't have that. right right here that's the wire and I'm, I'm not gonna take the old one out we'll just leave that one and we'll just double it up so that should let the most current through there I suppose here's my little splice and with the uh the old switch there kind of tricky to get that all sorted there wasn't much much wire hanging out here so I had to splice on a little more oh no doesn't look good An update on the propeller repair. Uh, today is Wednesday, so we've been out of the water for one week now. Uh, Friday was the last day we did work on the propeller on the boat. Um, they had the shaft and propeller machine, so it's all ready to go. It was ready to go Friday. We almost got it relaunched then, but uh, there was another boat on the boat lift, and we didn't quite get it in then. So of course we had to wait the weekend, and then of course Monday and Tuesday was a holiday, so. Here we are one week later, but today, Monday is looking, or Wednesday is looking promising. They should be able to get that, just pop back in there, I think within an hour. And then if the boat, la boat uh, launch is open, we can be back in the water. And it's supposed to be a little wind today, so we could try out those new sails. We're really looking forward to that. While I'm waiting for boat yard stuff, I've fabricated up this little bracket. I'm gonna put my wind anemometer on the back corner by the solar panels. So it won't be so, because it doesn't really reach very good connection up by the mast. Should have it, should, but it should see the wind pretty good as long as we're not healing too far over, I suppose. There we go. Unfortunately, that could be a little bit of shade on the panels. We'll see how it affects it. So I, I met up with Project Atticus a while ago because they were in Malta. And I saw recently on their video that Greece, they had a big hassle because they didn't have a boating license. So I got me nervous because I don't have any, any kind of captains or boating license. Um, so I looked it up and apparently in Florida you can get a uh, online do an online course through Boat US to get a uh, boating safety certificate. So I'm doing that. It's kind of, kind of annoying, but maybe if it makes my life uh, checking into Greece a little easier, I'll whatever, just do that. Looks like this big race boat's going in the water today too. That would be so annoying to have to work on a boat that high out of the water, off the ground. So the boatyard had our prop shaft machined and we put a they put a space they made a spacer there so hopefully we won't have any more interactions with the tiller and the propeller well, there you have it propeller is fixed boat ready to go it's ready to go back in the water can't wait to test out the sails and the prop i decided to split the video up here though because it was getting kind of long and i'll have the other ha half uh, posted in a couple days about testing the yeah, propeller and sails and everything. It worked great. Uh, big thanks to everybody who pitched in. I got a, we got a few donations uh, helping out with the prop, so massive thanks for that. It really helps. 
And also thanks to the boatyard because they were great, great to work with, real friendly. Um, I thought the prices were quite reasonable and uh, the work I thought was excellent. So thank you guys. At the If, you, if you, anybody needs any work at the Manuel Boatyard in Malta or just around the area, it was worth sailing there um, compared to the other <laughs> service I was, I was experiencing at other places. I highly recommend them in Malta over there. Um, so I guess in the next video, yeah, we'll be testing out the sails and the propeller sailing around Malta. I'll see you guys then. Oh, and I'll just leave you with uh, some video. It's kind of walking around Malta with not really any narration or anything, just to close out the video. So see you guys next time. Bye. So many amazing coves on here and everybody decides to pack in to this one crowded one with so many people. It makes no sense. Get the best patera on the island. Whatever that is, looks like a sandwich. There's a patera for you. Pretty good. It's your British influence here. <laughs>